Hello everyone, welcome. Finally, here we are with a new video. It's been, a, I haven't filmed a video since Christmas because I have been working on this huge project and it is finally done. This has been consisting my life for several weeks now and I am so, so happy it is finished. I am so excited to show you guys SSS Tax Shop for all the girls at Silver Star Stables to have a tax store to go to. SSS stands for Silver Star Stables, so it's Silver Star Stables Tax Shop. This tax store is over here at Teresa's house, so on this table. And how it goes is, is Teresa's mom, Josie, who is inside here behind the cash register. She owns this tax store and this is her business. But of course, sometimes Teresa is going to have to run a tax shop. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that. In this video, I just wanted to show you guys this little building that I built. And while I was making this, I really wanted to film a tutorial on how I was doing it. However, I didn't do that because at a lot of parts, I myself didn't know what I was doing and it took a lot of thinking and figuring out. So I wasn't able to like make a tutorial. So now that it's done and I know how I did it, I'm going to tell you guys about all the different parts of building this. And of course, at the same time, give you a little tour because I'm very proud of it and I really want to show it to everybody. So we're going to start here at the front of the store. So, wow, where do I begin? So what I did, I actually built this building out of foam board. It was my first time ever working with foam board. I've always used cardboard. I really like the foam board. Um, it was pretty much the same as using cardboard. The only difference was it's a lot easier to get precise I think when you're cutting it and I just cut it with a very sharp knife <laughs> so I really like how the foam board worked out and then I covered all the foam board with scrapbook paper then for the outside of the building I didn't use scrapbook paper like the inside I cut jumbo popsicle sticks very precisely so it all fit just right and I painted them this very dark gray color so when I bought my popsicle sticks I made the mistake of buying Christmas color popsicle sticks that were bright green and red and it took a lot of coats of paint to turn them to gray <laughs> and I couldn't paint anything white because green and red just bled through the white and I think you have to have a special primer to cover that up and I didn't have that so yeah next time I'm not buying colored Christmas popsicle sticks for a project then for the trim I used skinny sticks and it was my actually my first time ever buying skinny sticks and working with them and I really like the skinny sticks I have used so many on this project they're everywhere I use them for the trim which they're perfect for now for the windows, I used just some clear plastic from packaging. This window I made out of a raspberry package and this one was out of a spinach box. <laughs> so they work absolutely amazing for making them into windows for miniatures. And for the door, this was a very frustrating to make, I will say. I made like three doors and finally I got it right. Mostly I had a hard time making it fit just perfectly in the doorway and also had a hard time covering it with the paper because I had to cover both sides and it was just, it took time. So for the inside of the window, like the inside seams here of the foam board, I had to wrap those with paper along with this window. That way you don't see the edges of the foam board so it looks nice and clean. And then when I was making all these windows, I made sure to glue the plastic on the outside. So I think that makes it a little more realistic because that's kind of how the real windows are. And then I just glued it on first and then covered it all in a piece of this paper when I glued it on. So hopefully that all makes sense. So it was very, it's very concealed. Then I used these tiny little hinges that my mom had and I'm pretty sure she got these from like somewhere like Hobby Lobby. And I just glued it to the door and then to the wall of the building. One at the top, one at the bottom. And then I used a little bit, a tiny little bit of paint to paint in the nail holes. So it made it a little more realistic so it doesn't just look glued, it actually looks like it has nails. Now to glue these on, I used a glue called Daco Cement, I believe. I used a lot of this glue. As you can see, it's pretty much done. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's called Daco Cement. As I said, this was great for gluing metal. So hot glue, I found that it does not work very good for me for gluing metal. It just 
pops right off. It doesn't stick very well. So this worked great for the metal. And I also used this on a lot of the little things like this halter rack and the shelving. It just, it gave me a little more time to adjust things as hot glue dries really fast, but this dries a little slower, but still faster than like Elmer's glue. So I don't have to sit there all day holding it. So I really love this glue. I will be getting some more of it. Now back to the door, it isn't actually perfect because this hinge is glued on top of the popsicles, the jumbo popsicle sticks, which are the siding. So this hinge is up a little higher than this hinge down here, which is glued right to the foam board on top of this brick patterned paper that I put around the whole bottom, kind of give it a little more detail. But anyway, so it's kind of a little bit crooked actually, but it's not really noticeable at all. So it is fine, I'm still really happy with it. And then for some detail, of course, I added these little um, door handles. These are little um, paper clips. I used black paper clips because I wanted everything to kind of be accented just a little bit with black. And I really like how it kind of stood out better than like silver. So these, I just cut them and bent them and then I poked them into the foam board and added a little bit of the Daco cement glue. So. They stay in nicely, but they're just for decoration. I don't actually pull them to open and close the door. You just gotta pop it in down here. And it works pretty good. The door isn't, like I wouldn't open it 20 times a day, but it'll be great for filming and just having fun. And then lastly, on the inside, I just poked a little hole in the foam board and bent a little piece of wire as a hook. And then now I can hang this little open and close sign that I made on there. So this it was really easy to make. I just got on the internet and Googled open and close sign and I found this one and I just printed them out and then glued them back to back right in between like a piece of black cardstock. I added a little string. So we have a perfect cute little open and close sign. I really like that detail. And before we move on, I'm kind of going to be all over the place because I kind of like think of the things I want to tell you about and how I made. So we can't forget the sign up here that says SSS Tax Shop. This I had my mom help me make. So she got on her desktop and made this like little sign. So it was, it's just a very basic font and she just printed it out and then I glued it to back card, black cardstock. So it'd have like a border, which I did that with everything I glued onto the walls and that really makes it pop. So that's really, really like how that turned out. I should also mention for the paint for the siding, I used this paint. It's Apple Barrel Acrylic Paint. It's in the color Pewter, I believe, Pewter Gray. I used every drop of this. Like we were down to the drop at the end. I was mixing a little bit of this dust in here, <laughs> this dry paint with water and make it come back to life so I could just finish off some of the ends of the very last skinny sticks. So we used every drop of this. I really like this color a lot. Um, this paint was a really old, really old bottle of paint. So the paint is a little lumpy in places. If you look really closely, like it's not perfectly smooth, but it's fine, it still gets the overall color across very well. So it's all good. I would probably get more of this just because it's a very nice color and if I ever have to touch this up for some reason. Now I think we should talk about the roof. So this was really fun to make. These are miniature shingles that my mom got from Hobby Lobby. So they're just like real shingles. They have the sand and they even feel like they're made out of like the shingle material. You lay them just like real shingles. You have to start with the starter strip and then after that then they're just really easy. You kind of have to make your own starter strip by, starter strip by cutting off some of the shingles to make a strip. Anyway, it's kind of hard to explain, but I used the deco cement to glue these down, but then I ran out completely, so I used Elmer's glue up here, which worked just fine. It just took a really long time to dry, which was fine. And then after they were all glued down, I used Elmer's glue and I painted the whole entire thing with Elmer's glue because these shingles were shedding sand really bad. Like all the sand was just all over the place. So I had to seal that, but now they don't shed any sand at all. And it helped to glue them down some more. And the actual roof is just a piece of foam board. So if you look underneath, that there is just the bottom of the white foam board, if I can focus. I didn't even bother covering the bottom of the roof because it's just white foam board and it looks just fine and good. And then for around the roof, I just put a border of 
black painted skinny sticks just to finish it off really nice and I really like how the it was super helpful how the foam board and the skinny sticks are the same width so I just this was really easy just to glue those on and before we move on to the inside of the store, I also want to mention that this building is 8 inches by 10 inches. I originally had it 10 inches by 12 inches, so 2 inches longer and 2 inches bigger the other way too. But I had to change that. I had to start over. I already had like my wooden my floor covered in paper and everything but I had to start over because a piece of scrapbook paper is 12 inches long and I had my foam board 12 inches long and there was no scrapbook paper left on the ends to cover over the ends of the foam board because it was perfectly the same length and that wasn't going to work because I wanted them to be covered all nice and clean so I had to make it a little smaller and at first I thought I could make it work just fine but then once I was covering other things it was not going to work out but I really like this size it's the perfect size so I'm happy I made it a little bit smaller and made things a little easier and because I did that I didn't have any seams of paper so it looks nicer if that makes sense. Now inside here this piece um, it's just covered in scrapbook paper as they all are <laughs> and I put trim around the door and the window with the skinny sticks Which really makes it look nice and I also added baseboard the whole way around the whole building um, So it's kind of covered because I have the whole store stocked But as you can see back there, I just painted it gray and I really like how the gray looks in here anyway, and then over here we have our cash or our, our, uh, checkout area or checkout table so we'll start with the table so let me just move the cash register off this table was very frustrating to make <laughs> the most hardest parts of building this was the door in this table interestingly enough i tried many different ways to make this table but this ended up being the only thing that worked uh it's also not perfect it's a little lopsided like it, it actually stands very nicely at first it was wobbling a lot so we had to fix that but it turned out well, actually. It turned out really nice, I think. So, and then we have the cash register. So this, I'll show you all the details. This I made using a tutorial by My Froggy Stuff. She makes a ton of tutorial videos for miniatures and she makes them for her dolls and that's what she made this tutorial for. But I just did the exact same thing, only I made it like even smaller for Schleich size. So it is tiny, it's just made out of black cardstock. And maybe I can show you, my arms getting tired of holding the camera, but I can show you, but the cash drawer opens just like that. I just made some tiny little paper monies in there just to add more detail. And then you can press, push the cash drawer back in. So I really love how this cash register turned out. I just printed out from the internet this little computer screen and the keyboard and also, let me turn it around, the numbers on here for the customer screen. And then, yeah, I really, this is a great tutorial. If you want to make a tiny crash register that I just dropped, <laughs> it's hard to handle with one hand and it's so tiny because I had to make it slight size. But if you need a tiny cash register, the My Froggy Stuff tutorial is awesome. And I'm really proud of myself because this was like my first time ever completely following through with a tutorial. Usually halfway through, I change it because <laughs> I want to do it my own way. But I followed through with this tutorial and it turned out beautiful. I really like the little receipt printer as well. I mean, it's just so cute. I love it. Anyway, that goes right here. So just like that. And the table, is, the table I was just talking about, it's just made out of pops jumbo popsicle sticks and skinny sticks. Now the whole way around the store at the top, I have all these little posters or like signs of different equestrian tack brands. So this one here, it's USEA, but I had to put that one in here because that's my favorite equestrian sport. So I wanted to put it in here as well, but the rest are all equestrian brands. So we just have all of these and I just took, I just went on the internet and Google searched equestrian logos, you know, and Google searched some of my favorites and then I just printed them off really small and then I glued them to black cardstock and then I glued them to my walls. So we also have Schleich back there because of course we had to have Schleich and we have Lumiere and Horseware Ireland and PS of Sweden, Bait Saddles, that's the kind of saddle I have and I have a 1K helmet and a Lumiere saddle pad. 
and uh, Sunny has a horsewear blanket, but never tried ice or PS of Sweden. Oh, they're the only two. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I guess that's because I printed out other ones, but I didn't end up using them all. So anyway, but yeah, I think those really add a nice detail. I think it really makes it look like a tack store. So I really like how those look. Now this shelf here is kind of like its own little shelf. It just stands out in the middle of the store. This was challenging to make as well, just because I had red popsicle sticks and it kept bleeding through my paint and it was not, it kept changing the color of my paint so I was painting it. So I painted this several times and I finally just went with black because black is usually pretty good at covering things up. So black worked out well. I still haven't painted the bottom of it. The bottom's kind of ugly. It still has like all my millions of coats of paint down there. And one of my little grooming boxes just fell out. There we go. But it looks good. I mean, it's not perfect. If you pull out all the blankets on the shelf and look at it very carefully, you can see it's kind of a little messy as far as the painting goes, but it still serves its perfect purpose well. We have a whole bunch of blankets on the shelves. And then on top here, I just have some saddle pads. I was not sure at all how I was going to put saddle pads in the store. Like how was I going to like display them? But this ended up working just fine. I could put several more on here. And I just bunched up a bunch of blankets and put them on the shelves. And on this side, there's just some grooming kits and some blankets and some little, these aren't quite blankets. I think they're just like, yeah, they're just, they just making the shelves look nice and full. So <laughs> I just put those on there. So yeah, this was just, um, I made this out of popsicle sticks and skinny sticks, jumbo popsicle sticks. I just kind of built like a frame and then I just went in and put, the shelves in so yeah just like that now over here I really like this wall just how we have this shelf and these halter racks I love how the halters all look on the racks this these halter racks were really easy to make I just took a skinny stick painted it and then I made a whole bunch of tiny little clips out of wire to hook the halters on so these were kind of painful for my fingers to make because I had to bend them all and the wire kept poking, but they were so worth it. They look really good and it didn't take that long. So I really like how this turned out. I just have to be careful that when I hang my halters on these, I don't snag the ribbon of the halters because they are wire and they're just a little pokey, but as long as I'm careful, it'll work fabulous. So just hook on like that. And down here, I just have a like crate with some lead ropes, you know, just to add some more inventory and just to add some more stuff in the store. And over here, I you know I just got some several pitchforks, just making the store look full. So this shelf here, this is real fun to make. I just painted jumbo popsicle sticks and then I cut them. I believe this the shelves are four inches long and I did four, I did three shelves actually, yes. Did three shelves and I just glued these in with the deco cement. It worked really well. And I just had to do a lot of measuring stuff to make sure it was all straight and everything looked like, you know, straight <laughs> because I didn't want my how I didn't want to have lopsided crooked shelves, but they aren't. So I'm happy with how those turned out. And I made the and I made all the shelves one inches tall and it's perfect for like buckets and grooming boxes. I'm really happy with how that turned out. It's perfect for all that stuff. Underneath, I just have a big crate of brushes that you can pick out with the grooming box you buy and some little homemade brushes. On top, I just have several treats and, you know, like a decoration. And then over here are the saddle racks I made. So these I kind of did cheat a little bit. So as you can see, I used a Shalike saddle rack and I'm really happy with how these turned out because this saved me a lot of time and I never really use my Schleich saddle racks around my stable at all. I don't know why, I just don't. So these now have a use in here in the tax store. And I just took a piece of, um, you know, I don't even know what this is called. It's a tiny little piece of wood, like wooden stick you can buy at the craft store, like Hobby Lobby. And it's just the perfect size to clip on the Schleich saddle racks. And I painted it white and glued it in here. And I just clipped these on and it's perfect for the tax store. And I'm able to get four saddles in here, which I think is perfect. And then there's just some sacks of grain for sale by the saddle racks. And one of these days, someday, when I ever feel like just randomly crafting again, I might make like some 
like super tiny little price tags to kind of put in here. I think that would make it look even more like a store, but it looks great now, I think. And I just love the little cash register. The tutorial works so amazing. Sorry, Josie, I must show it again. I just think it's so cute. Anyway, I think that really makes it look like a store. So that is the inside of our tax store. I'm just kind of trying to think about what else I want to tell you about it. So to glue all the walls together and the main structure to glue it together, I'd like to glue the roof on. I used hot glue, which worked great. And then once I ran out of deco cement, I used Elmer's glue for all the little details and stuff, which worked well. As I'm sure you probably noticed, I only put a half a roof on the building. Uh, I did that so it can easily get light in here for filming and it's also so much easier just to mess in here and have fun in here when there's only half a roof. I probably could have made like a removable side but that's a lot of work and I really like how it looks just like this. This is what this side looks like. It's just plain and simple and pretty and then this side over here is just the same. Just has siding on it. I originally didn't want to or plan on putting skinny sticks around the bottom of the building underneath the little brick scrapbook paper to kind of make it look like brick, but I had to to kind of cover up um, the scene where I glued the walls to the floor and everything. So, but it looks good, but I actually didn't plan on doing that, especially in the front here. I really had to do it though, because when I cut this piece, it ended up too short. Uh, so I had to kind of like raise it up and glue it on. It was all messy. So that all covers it well. So on my Instagram, I did like a story thing where I asked you guys to guess what I was making because I put a lot of updates on like my Instagram story of all the little projects I was making that were going to be this project, you know, like making the table and all that kind of stuff. I've been trying to be a little more active on my Instagram story. I don't know if that's gonna last or not, we'll see. <laughs> but anyway, a lot of you guys thought I was making like a tack room or a feed room, and it actually is a tack room. Like, it's a room with tack, and, but it's like a tack store, and someone did guess tack store, and that is what we have here. And that's really about it. We're going to have so much fun with this in the series from now on, and yeah, that's about it. I guess if you're going to kind of like, if you're gonna attempt to make something like this, I guess just know that it takes a really long time. Like I thought I was gonna be done with this in three days. No, <laughs> I thought it was just like several pieces of foam board glued together, it'll be fine. But it actually took me a really long time, weeks and weeks to make this. That's why you haven't seen a video from me because I've just been working on this. And I guess like really precise measuring really helps a lot because then it makes everything fit together really nice and then it looks really clean. So thank you so very much for joining me for this little video. I'm very proud of how this project turned out. I never really thought I'd actually be able to craft something this beautiful. I mean, I just love how the front looks and honestly, I think my favorite detail is the open and close sign, which is so funny because it's just such a little like detail. It was literally the easiest thing to make. Maybe that's why I like it so much, but I just love how that looks. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video, which hopefully will either be the Lead Mare episode 5 or a mail time, which I both of those videos I really need to do, so one or the other. Anyway, I will see you then. Bye!